Hi there. I'm Joe Dudek, president and founder of Keyhole Marketing. And I'm Shannon Jarek. I work for Keyhole as the assistant brand manager. And this is Metaphorically Speaking, a podcast that explores the mysterious side of marketing. so great to be back with you on this podcast. This is our second episode during this in-between time. I'm calling it the unseason. Earlier this year, we launched season one where we compared creating your business story to the way an artist would go into a studio and create his or her art. And as of last week, we actually recorded season two of the Metaphorically Speaking podcast where we talked about fear and specifically exploring how it affects our lives, our careers, and the things we offer the world. Today, we continue our series of interviews with entrepreneurs, something we've been doing for several years on our blog and just recently brought to the podcast. Here, we just try to get to know entrepreneurs on a personal level, find out more about what their stories are what, and really kind of what made them crazy enough to start their own business and really ultimately touch on what that plot twist that might have taken place that pushed them finally over the edge into entrepreneurship. And today we're talking with Mitch Causey. He's the founder and CEO of DemandWell, which is a digital marketing agency near Indianapolis. And that focuses on attracting and converting traffic from organic search. And he just recently took the leap earlier this year towards entrepreneurship after years of great success of building the brand of Lessonly. And now he's kind of building on that experience to advise companies on their SEO from anywhere from mom and pop shops to Fortune 100 companies. And so I met him earlier this year. We had an opportunity to work on a project with a client, and um, I just kind of knew right away I wanted to interview him. He's just a really passionate guy. He's got a great work ethic, really infectious attitude, and seems really destined for success. So with no further ado, here's my conversation with Mitch. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Mitch Causey. We're here with Mitch Causey. He's a great guy. He's a... Uh, He's a guy with a great beard, which you can't see on the podcast. Gives me a lot of beard envy, and that's that's saying a lot because uh, it's actually a little sh- it's a little it's short right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm not feeling quite as bad yeah. right now. So, thank you for doing that for me. Uh, no, so he's he's out here based. I guess you're in Fishers, right? Uh, Noblesville. Noblesville. Okay, yeah. yeah. So kind of the Indianapolis Hamilton County area. Yep. I flew out here just to talk to him uh, from Colorado. <laughs> no, but it was a nice perk of the uh, of coming out here. So, so Mitch and I are just uh, we've got a chance to work together a couple times, and uh, I've just loved getting to know him as much as I can on a working relationship. And every time we've connected, you know, personally, it's always been it's been good for me. So, he's got a good story. He just started his own business. We were talking. February of this year. Yeah, so February. Yep. About what, nine months ago, ten, eight months ago? Yeah. Um, so he's just getting started, but things seem to be moving along pretty quickly. So mm-hmm. I'd love to hear more about his story. Start. Let's start off pretty easy with the first question because I go to your LinkedIn and it's Mitchell, but I call you <laughs> Mitch. So what, what's your preference? Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, on paper, it's always Mitchell, but everyone calls me Mitch. Mitch, yeah, okay. You're yeah. good with either one, though. Great with either one. Okay. Probably prefer Mitch. Mitch, but, yeah. perfect. Okay. <laughs> but I don't feel so bad. I, w- I probably won't go to Mitchell, so I'll be good. <laughs> about half of my like aunts and uncles call me Mitchell. Oh, they're, yeah. they're about the only ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my mom calls me Joseph when I'm in really uh-huh. trouble. <laughs> Um, talk a little bit about like, where did you grow up? Where are you from originally your upbringing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, grew up, uh, for vast majority of my life in, uh, Southport, hmm. uh, which is, I don't think it's actually a city or a town. I think it's just an area. Yeah. Okay. I could be wrong. So it's part of Indianapolis, right? Yeah. It's part yeah. of Indianapolis. Yeah. yeah. Indianapolis, uh, in the address. Uh, so on the South side, uh, grew up there. Um, but. Fun fact, I actually went to a school called Heritage Christian, which is always oh, on the north side. Yeah. Uh, so always had like a 30-minute commute the hall, to yeah. school. <laughs> Especially during the wintertime. I'm sure that was fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I I have somewhat of a location crisis where I grew up on the south side, but all of my friends were on the north side. No, so yeah. So I kind of – I actually know the north side better than the south side. Yeah. Of Indy. Yeah. yeah. You went there all of high – like through high yeah, school? Yeah, K through 12. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Awesome. Do you have brothers, sisters, or what's up? Yeah, I've got one brother uh, and one sister. Okay. My brother is eight years older than me, and mm-hmm. sister is six years older than me. Oh, okay. The baby. Yeah, yeah I'm the baby. Yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> got seven siblings older than me. Well, oh my gosh. Four half siblings. No, six half siblings, one full. So, oh my gosh. If I did the math there, it's three and a half, four. No, no, no. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then you're yep. married. You've got two kids now, right? So we have a 15-month-old and a negative one-month-old. Negative one-month-old. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was that soon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because we le- I left here what, three months ago, and I knew one was on the way. I think I, in my mind it was happening sooner than yeah. that. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Wow. It'd be exciting. Yeah. Both boys. Both boys. Okay. Yeah. First, first one was Marshall. Second one will be Caleb. Okay. Yeah. No Mitchell. No Mitchell. No Mitchell Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Without Marshall is close enough. Yeah, that is close. <laughs> um, where'd you meet your wife at then? So we met in a public speaking class our sophomore year of high school. High school, okay. Yeah. So she was a heritage too. Yep. And then we started dating uh two weeks before we graduated high school. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Technically high school sweethearts. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is she from the north side? She is. She's uh, from the Carmel area. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. But she also she moved around all over uh, like Minnesota, Illinois, uh, Michigan, Indiana a couple times. Yeah, yeah. wow. She kind of grew up, but they landed in Indy area. Okay, mm-hmm. like military family or something. Or? Uh, no, uh, her dad uh, was just um, like an executive at a lot of companies, gotcha. and so. He'd be, you know, like the CFO in this company, so I'd have to move there, hmm. or VP of this and another yeah. company, and have to move there. So, yeah. I probably wouldn't have asked that question three months ago, but we're we're right in Colorado Springs, which is right by the Air Force Academy. Oh, so yeah. I feel like half the people we meet are somehow connected to yeah. the military. Yeah, they were there sure. years ago, or they're not there now. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm always curious, just me, more and more entrepreneurs who, you know, just that balance of life and... You know, you've got your family, you've got your work, and you're, mm-hmm. you're putting a lot into your work to get it to get it mm-hmm. going. I'm sure for you, especially mm-hmm. as you're getting the getting the foundation set. But I feel like just in talking with you, I mean, you've always been very upfront with me on well, I can do that in three months, or I can I can talk to you in four days. You know, yeah. so you, yeah. you're very conscious of how much time you have and when your open windows are. Yeah. So I imagine that falls into your family too, protecting them and, and yeah. their time. So. How do you – was that – you think that's a fair assessment to say that you sort of have created some pretty good barriers around your family to protect them? And how do you think you're dealing with that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, I think there's different seasons in life. My wife and I talk a lot about seasons. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think back to my last job where I was employee number three and uh, ended up, you know, being there for five years. Uh, while, you know, we grew up to like 100 employees or whatever at that company and um you know in that season of time uh i limited 45 hours a week no matter Mm -hmm. what just nine hours a day no matter what calling it quits if if i didn't get to something it's it's moving Mm -hmm. you know to next week um that was awesome uh can't quite do that right now. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, you know, in a season of uh, definitely, you know, for me, not uh, not where I want to be in terms of spending time with the family. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, we've my wife and I do date night every week. And, mm, nice. um, you know, I have dinner with them and uh, do the nightly routine uh, with my son, mm-hmm. you know, pretty much every night yeah. uh, and then go back to work, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like, you know, trying to find that balance, but hopefully this season of uh, truly limiting work time will come sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's always, and I didn't start out. I mean, my, I had the corporate career for a long time, mm-hmm. so I, I think I did an okay job with turning off work mm-hmm. and then it does get hard when you're an entrepreneur to really like, especially when you work out of the house. And I'm not mm-hmm. sure, do you do that as well? Do mm-hmm. you work? Yeah. So mm-hmm. you, everything blends together and you don't Absolutely. know like what hat you're wearing at what time. Yeah. And, yeah. and of course your kids don't, to see that, they're like, you're home, you're, right. let's play. You know? Right. Oh, I'm exactly. actually working until four or five. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And I, I think too, the, you know, how, when we've communicated about time, I think a lot of that comes from more of a dedication to quality. Mm-hmm. than not. I'd mm-hmm. rather say, um, 
I'd rather say no to someone for five months than yes and then do a crap job. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, so I think you know more than more than anything, that's you know a, a big motivation for that. Yeah. Um, just that I want to knock it out of the park every time mm-hmm. uh, when I say yes. Mm-hmm. So I say yes as a uh, few times as possible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah, I think those are sometimes lessons learned the hard way. So yeah, as much right. as you can sort of right. put some barriers up, you don't have to do it that way. Um, you, As we talked about, you're really kind of new in this game. You've been mm-hmm. doing it since February, doing mm-hmm. your own thing. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling about your decision to, to make the jump? Yeah. Are you regretting it? Are you going back to work tomorrow at your <laughs> old job? Or are you feeling pretty good about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. No, no way. And <laughs> and that was my favorite uh, I, absolutely favorite job of my whole you know life so far and um just had a blast uh, building the team collaboratively with everybody there and um you know if you now is it lessonly right? yeah lessonly yep. so yeah um and and working with that team especially max the ceo mm. uh you know if you haven't read his book yet yeah. uh do better work <laughs> Uh, it's incredible, and and hopefully he'll sponsor this podcast. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just like such a glimpse into the uh, wonderful person that he is, mm-hmm. um, and that he brings to work every day uh, to inspire everybody there. So had an absolute blast um, there, but uh, you know, over time was blessed with the opportunity to essentially like replace myself. Uh, entirely on the marketing team, including hiring uh, an all-star pro marketer to lead the team mm-hmm. named Kyle Lacey. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about him and really everybody there. Um, but, you know, I got to the point where I knew that I could still contribute, but um, I also knew that I could probably contribute more and learn a heck of a lot more mm-hmm. uh, if I kind of spread my wings and so I did, and I have uh, I've learned so much <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the last, you know, seven months. Uh, what thought, are some of those lessons you've sort of yeah, learned so far? Yeah. Well, it's funny. You know, I, I, I feel like I always get to the point where, like, I think I know it all, mm, you know, and course. then it's like as soon as you reach that point, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, you know nothing. nothing right? yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, it sounds silly, but one of the biggest ones, you know, that really even the first few months before I officially launched was just cash flow. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's obviously so important. But, um, you know, when I was at Lesson Lee, I never, never had to deal with that. Yeah, I've never had sure. to be the one managing that. Um, and so, you know, creating forecasts of like, okay, I need to, I need to actually produce this much and, uh, you know, set up my contract terms in a way that I'm going to have cash flow, cash flow when yeah. I need it. Um, stuff like that. I think that was, yeah, that was one of the big ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is important. Mm-hmm. It's such a mind shift when you're responsible to, to mm-hmm. bring in that, mm-hmm. set those things up. Um, what's go back to? So your company's called Demand Well, which I don't yeah. think we've actually mentioned. Talk a little bit about yeah. the name of that. Just as a content guy, I'm always interested in yeah. sort of the story behind that and where does <laughs> that come from? Yeah, for sure. So um, it kind of has a dual meaning. Um, okay. The uh, more business marketing side is uh, to be the source of demand. Mm-hmm. You know, like a well is a source of water. Yep. So we are the the demand space well <laughs> yeah. that you can get demand from or, or we can help you create more demand. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the business pitch side of things. Yeah. Um, but the truer and, you know, I think better answer uh, is just a challenge to me and to the customers I work with um, and anyone who joins my team to truly demand uh, good in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many people um, that just don't have opportunity right now uh, for, you know, lack of clean water uh, you know, being enslaved in like trafficking situations, you know, list goes on and on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are so many people that um, don't have opportunity. And so um, that's that's the biggest one is mm-hmm. that like I can't sleep well at night while that is the case. Mm-hmm. And I so I absolutely uh, am demanding that um, 
we changed that. Mm, okay. And that's, you know, one of the big reasons why I started the company in the first place was to be able to have a significant increase in cash flow mm. so that I can have a significant increase in cash flow out gotcha. uh, to people who need it more than I do. Yeah. Yeah. So you, do you have some partnerships or alignments that you're already committed to or you have visions for? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So some that, you know, my wife and I have really been giving to for since we were in college and, and uh, really want to scale, uh, you know, as much as we can. Mm, that's yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So we probably also haven't really mentioned this, but Demand Well does, I would say it is search engine SEO, search engine optimization. Yeah. That's probably a simplified way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I kind of say two, two things. One is yeah. the SEO side. And then once you get that traffic to your site, uh, help folks actually convert that better through conversion rate optimization mm -hmm. as well. So kind of that dual, um, dual focus as much as we can. Yep. Okay. So thinking about your kids mm -hmm. and thinking about SEO, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about my clients when I'm trying to explain yeah, SEO to right. them and they're sort of like, why do we need it? Why does this matter? What does content have to do with it? Right. So I'm curious for somebody who lives in the world a lot more than I do, yeah. like, how would you describe that to your kids? Yeah. How would you describe SEO to your kids? Yeah. That maybe would help make all of us, <laughs> make sense for all of us, you know? <laughs> right. It's hard with my kids, you know, because they're <laughs> just younger. They're, they're pointing and just making know, yeah. grunts. How about uh, to my child? He's five years old. He's fine. How about that? Yeah. So I, I feel like I typically say something along the lines of uh, helping people get more traffic from people searching in Google. Mm -hmm. Um. That's the SEO side. And then on the conversion side is then once those people are now on your website, how do you get them to do what you want them to do? Mm, yeah. Seems to make sense to me. Um, how exactly do you, you know, you talked about some late nights, put the kids down, mm -hmm. put the child down and then mm -hmm. you're, you're back up. How do you, how do you serve your clients with what you do? Like what kind of stuff, like talk, maybe walk through a day of what you're, what you're tackling. Cause I know you've done some work for my clients and there's been, as you described it as like I'll be off the off offline for a while doing the work. You know? Right, right. And then you come out, you produce, you know, a significant amount of research on SEO right. kind of stuff. But maybe talk a little bit about what happens when you're away doing research. What kind of stuff yeah. do you do for your clients? Yeah. Yeah, out? absolutely. Yeah. So so typically I will, I will have some sort of a kind of an upfront like audit planning phase, typically around 30 or 45 days. Uh, like you said, I go offline or like I, sometimes I'll say I'll go, I go dark, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, don't really communicate a whole lot. Um, and then after that, ideally, you know, working with someone on a recurring basis, uh, you know, whether that's like weekly or monthly or whatever it is, uh, where we have those, uh, you know, regular check-ins to make sure that the things we talked about are actually occurring. Mm -hmm. Um and so during that audit phase, um, you know, I really look at three things. Um, and it's really kind of the three categories that I personally break down the uh, Google search algorithm. Okay. Um, and so that is ACE, uh, a, a word. Uh, all of that in a word is ACE. So okay. ACE stands for Architecture, Content, and Endorsements. Uh, architecture are the, you know, really technical pieces um, like page speed and uh, mobile usability, making sure it's responsive, right. um, you know, having a secured server, stuff like that. Uh, on the content front, pretty self-explanatory, it's content, mm -hmm. uh, but specifically text-based content yeah. um, and help folks do a ton of keyword research to understand basically like the whole universe of content that they should be writing about. Mm -hmm. And then lastly is... Uh, Endorsements, uh, those are third-party websites that link back to your site. Um, Google basically looks at each of those three categories, uh, gives you a score, adds all that up, and that's basically, you know, how they rank your mm -hmm. site. Um, so I'll look at each of those three categories, put together a specific plan of, you know, understanding where they're at today, uh, where they should be, uh, and and train them on how to bridge that gap. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can attest to the in depthness of this report. I mean, it's we're working through it with one client, and it's a ton of. We could work on it for ten years, and it, it, it still <laughs> scratches the surface. I think so. It's yeah. super intense. Yeah. 
Um, and you talked a little bit about that second piece, the content. Mm-hmm. And I think the challenge, obviously, that's the world that, that I live in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the challenge, um, and probably you pay attention to this a little bit, is the challenge to write for spiders. Right. Things that are crawling through your site. And then right. also writing for humans who actually care about the content. Yes. Like what That makes it legible. So maybe talk a little bit about that that piece just as it yeah. relates to my audience yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's why I always bring up that second piece of conversion Mm. um, because, you know, you you could publish uh, content that a robot has written, uh, you know, on a white, uh, all white website with no styling (laughs) and just black text, you know, (laughs) uh, and have, and Google might rank that. Yeah. Um, But if anyone lands there, they're not going to do what you want them to do. Um, and so that's where, you know, the conversion side comes in. Um, so, you know, some of those factors are, what are you saying? What's the messaging? Uh, but also how is it laid out visually uh, and stuff like that, that uh, is equally important. Um, I think a lot of folks sometimes focus on that first into the detriment right. of search um, because they're just not, you know, focused on including keywords, mm-hmm. including, you know, that, that intentionally non-human side yeah, yeah. Um, is really difficult, uh, I think, for most marketers to, to um, gravitate toward, yeah. it, you know, without much coaching. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, if, you know, if, if I can help uh, folks integrate that piece into it, um, typically the charts go up and to the right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And I think, yeah, you're educating not only your clients, but even in my position, marketers who have a grasp of what you're doing, but my brain isn't wired from that vantage point. I mean, I was yeah, trained right. in writing, so you know it's easier for me to do that, and then I have to put it in there so that Google cares about it. Right. Know? So trying to find that balance that can be tough, but for getting for pushing me to to think about it that way is yeah. good. Yeah. Your your brain's just wired differently than mine. Yeah. Which is exactly. Probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want so what we always try to tackle with these interviews is just to explore that plot twist that happened in your life that led you to start your business. And you kind of unpacked it a little bit earlier, but I want to get yeah. back to that. But maybe we just backtrack a second and just talk about maybe your career path and like specific marketing roles. So maybe yeah. not your time at McDonald's or wherever you yeah, yeah. <laughs> spent time before, but, but maybe as you forayed into marketing, like where did yeah. that start? What are some of the roles you played? And yeah. Maybe build up into lessonly and then we'll kind of dive into like the jump you made. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, so yeah, so when I was a sophomore in high school, um, it's actually the same year I met my oh, now wife. <laughs> that was a big year. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, took an internship at an architecture firm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be an architect. Oh, wow. Okay. And was there, loved it. Uh, but the one thing that every single person in that building said to me was, unless this is the absolute most favorite thing you've ever done in your life, do not do it. Mm. Um, because it's going to take you 10 to 15 years yeah. to get to the level that you think you want to be at. Mm. Um, and by then, like, it's kind of like the end of your career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I really like this, but I'm not going to do that. So. Mm left there, um, ended up having a kind of like a, uh, I don't, can't remember what they call it, but like a gap class uh, okay. through school uh, that was actually from a college that I ended up going to, Indiana Wesleyan University mm-hmm. um, up in Marion, Indiana. And uh, in that class, I kind of got the introduction to marketing mm-hmm. of, you know, what it, it was really intro to business, but part of it was marketing. And it's kind of the first time I had truly understood what marketing was yeah. um, and so kind of was interested in that uh, ended up having someone in one of my classes in college say you know kind of get up in front of the class and say hey I'm making 100 grand online uh, and I was like whoa I'm gonna try that, <laughs> <What's> that <about? laughs> and I asked them you know what they were doing they were doing affiliate marketing mm. Um, and so I was like, okay, let me give that a shot. Tried it out, um, made zero money, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but learned a lot about SEO. Yeah. And so from that point, I actually got clients, uh, in, outside of my dorm room, um, in the, you know, SEO space, 
uh, ended up actually then right when I graduated college, I wanted to start my own SEO agency. Mm. And instead, I was uh, recruited uh, to an SEO agency called Slingshot yeah. SEO, which at the time was um, the 58th fastest growing company in America oh, yeah. uh, and is now no longer. Um, but I think they... you were there when I, I interviewed for a VP, not VP, sorry, a marketing <laughs> director position. Nice. And I think I looked at your, it was a 2012? Yeah, 14? it was, I think it was uh, 11, yeah. 11 and 12. Yeah. So I think 11 is when I interviewed there. Yeah, so cool. our, I think our paths crossed not knowing. That yeah, we, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously I didn't get the job, so, um, but it all turned out well because then I started this thing. So yeah, no yeah. Complaints, but, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so did that for a couple of years, had a blast, had some awesome clients like FedEx and Sears and Kmart, mm -hmm. and just say, well, I learned so much uh, working at that scale. Um, so then I wanted some management experience, went in-house at a company locally here at the time called Defender Direct, now it's called Defenders. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an ADT reseller, and um, just had uh, such great experiences there, learning even more. Um, and, uh, but I also, you know, kind of wanted to change after a year there, uh, it's a little too corporate for my taste. <laughs> and so, uh, a buddy of mine who was employee number two at Lesson Lee called me and said, Hey, uh, you know, we want someone to run marketing. And so I said, okay, nice. two weeks later I was there, uh, as number three scraped, scratched, crawled, you know, every, every day. For five years mm. for us to grow, uh, you know, at the at the clip that we did, um, like I said earlier, you know, reached a point where um, just felt like it was time for me to move on. Mm. And was yeah. that mostly your your efforts with them? Was that mostly through SEO practices? Were you doing sort of broad marketing back then or what were you doing? Yeah. So, you know, I was the only marketing person. Uh, yeah. And so I was doing it. You know, I was doing yeah. everything. Um, and and as I said earlier, you know, I replaced myself. Uh, I, I intentionally did that because I actually found out that I'm really bad at most things in marketing. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, I'd be like, wow, I'm terrible at event marketing. Let's hire an event manager. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm terrible at like graphic design that, you know, makes people's, uh, you know, makes people do what you want them to do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, hired designers, um, like we talked about brain wiring, you know, we, we called it brand in demand, mm -hmm. um, you know, brand being the kind of more creative side, demand being the more science side. Uh, I'm very much on demand. You know, that's, sure. that's another reason for demand well. Um, and so I hired a co-director of brand. Mm -hmm. So I was the director of demand. He was the director of brand for a while. So just slowly but surely found out that I was not great at a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and so would hire, you know, would hire people to fill in those gaps. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me just from the SEO standpoint, Yeah, you said you got into that in college mm -hmm. and really thought that's what you wanted to get into. What was mm -hmm. it about SEO that was super appealing to you? Yeah, because from my vantage point, there's nothing you're feeling about it. So <laughs> help me understand how why you like you do. What yeah, you like you to do what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think there's there's two sides of the coin. One is I love solving problems, mm. uh, and and it's it's one place that I have yet to see a situation that I could not eventually unpack. You know, mm. some challenges are harder than others, but uh, I think to date, like I've always had an answer for why something happened, yeah. whether I like that outcome or not. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure I know w what it was that yeah. you know changed. So it's I love it from problem solving perspective, but what I love, I think even more than that is I think Google is the greatest social experiment mm. of all time. Uh, you know, think about there's no other social database that has billions and billions and billions of data points every single day mm. of people searching. Yeah. And so when I do keyword research, that's that's actually my favorite thing in all of marketing. Really? You know, after having done all the roles, that is my favorite thing wow. because it it opens and unlocks the mind of like the population as a whole mm -hmm. and understand you know 
why do they search for this word instead of this word? Okay, yeah. Or, or why is that word searched so much more than this other word, mm-hmm. you know? And so just kind of understanding that, um, I think is just so fascinating. And that is really what kind of keeps me coming back. So you can get back, you can get the answers to those kind of questions when you understand not just that they search something, you're able to explore the why. Yeah. yeah interesting. Yeah. And a lot of it's inference, you know. Yeah, it's, okay. it's like just saying like, oh, you know, comparing different things and kind of drawing conclusions. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah. But you're looking at a lot of data points to come right. to that conclusion. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. So then maybe talk a little bit, well, it doesn't have to be a little bit, but then, so you were at Lessonly for a while, had some great success and, you know, it wasn't the corporate experience you had just come from. So yeah. it really kind of jived, I think, more with you. What, what, yeah. I don't know, what came to happen that just said, okay, now it's time to go on to that next time yeah. because you've been part of a good success story. Yeah. So sometimes people would ride that train for as long as it's successful, right? And yeah. And they still are successful. So yeah. what? Talk about some of the things that happened in your life that maybe led you to make that jump. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, a, a big one actually starts back in, uh, I think it was 1961. Okay. Uh, <laughs> back when I was born. Oh, no. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think either of us were around <laughs> no, back then. Um, but my grandpa was. Uh, okay. okay. A guy named Ron Jackson. And when he was 27, he started a marketing agency Mm. uh, called the Jackson Group. And it was one of Indy's top marketing agencies for decades. Wow. Uh, It was like always top three, you know, for a very long time until he sold it when he was 70. Mm. And um, so, you know, I, like I said earlier, I, I didn't really know what marketing was until college. But my grandpa, who was like my biggest mentor and like probably my favorite person on the planet. Um, you know, he ran a marketing agency. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was through that agency that he was just, he was able to provide a, a lifestyle for like our whole family um, and just everyone that he touched um, to live a life uh, really beyond their means. Mm. Um, he, he was like a huge donor in, um, uh, tech high school, local local high schools where he went to yeah. high school, and you know they have like a turf field, like all sorts of stuff. It's like you know my grandpa was 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 uh, is yeah he he's still alive, um, but through that time he was able to uh, just really help others grow mm-hmm. uh, beyond what they could have done on their own, um, and and that's the mission of Demandwell uh, is that we help others grow. Yeah. And, you know, kind of going back to demanding well in the world, um, you know, that's, you know, help others grow by helping people who can't help themselves uh, and also help marketers be the best marketers they can be. But anyway, so back to your question, um, that has just always been a burning desire in me ever since I learned what my grandpa's title of entrepreneur mm-hmm. <laughs> meant. meant yeah. uh, I literally remember the moment that I, that I learned what the word entrepreneur meant. And I was like, in that moment, I think I was in like third grade or something mm-hmm. in that moment. I was like, I know that that's what I want to do. Okay. So it's just been this burning thing in me for such a long time. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, at Lessonly, it's just, you know, we kind of from a personnel perspective, like really, really built out this just rock solid team. So I wasn't as necessary, I think, as I was, you know, prior. Um, and then also just on the personal front, um, my wife and I uh, lived on uh, a lake here locally, Morse Reservoir, mm-hmm. and we kind of flipped this kind of old shack of a house yeah. uh into a little less shacky of a house <laughs> perfect and uh and and we're able to sell that for quite a quite a good profit nice. and so um we used we essentially for the first time had seed money mm-hmm. that we could uh live off of for a few months if need be um thankfully business has gone uh better than i expected and yeah. we haven't had to like burn through much of that but we had it there Uh, just in case. And that was really kind of the first time uh, in our career that that was possible. Mm -hmm. So 
if there was like a if there was like a matchstick moment, it yeah. was probably the flipping of our house. But like the the whole you know uh, rick of wood yeah. sitting next to it was the the burning desire to basically follow my grandpa's footsteps. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Have you? It sounds like you didn't probably have a whole lot of conversations about that business growing up since you didn't really know what marketing was mm-hmm. until right. In college, have you since had a lot of conversations with them about owning a business and some of those things? Yeah, yeah, we we've had some really great conversations lately. And you know, the cool thing is, even even growing up, you know, I I would go visit him there, and uh, he, we would talk about business, but it, it wasn't mm-hmm. so much about marketing. It was more about you know how to like love your employees and and how to treat your employees well, okay, and, yeah. and essentially how to create a great culture. Mm-hmm. Um, of you know loyalty and and all that stuff and there's there's people there today um, that still say like they're there because of my grandpa you know mm. even though he hasn't been around there for you know years yeah he set a foundation there yeah, yeah yeah exactly so so I feel like I learned a lot about really just treating people well in general but also specifically your employees and uh, I think I think you know through the decades he had to uh, you know, do maybe a round of layoffs here and there or whatever, um, just depending on the season or, yeah. you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, he would be in tears when he was talking about those times yeah. that, you know, it's just so important to him that he would take care of the people mm. that surround him every yeah. day. So, you know, I got to learn um, so much about that. But yeah, in our, our more recent conversations, uh, it's been it's been really cool uh, to hear more of the specific side on you know the business side and uh it's funny when i told him just a just a couple months ago when i told him that i was doing this uh the first thing first words out of his mouth were now how old are you i said i'm 30 and he said okay good i was 27 i still Ah. meet you (laughs) that's awesome yeah so competitive (laughs) yeah that's great last couple questions then we'll wrap this up yeah appreciate your time we're doing right now, we're prepping for season two of the podcast, which we're on kind of the, in this in-between season, we're doing these interviews with entrepreneurs, but season two, we're going to talk about fears and how we move and live through fear. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd love to get you a couple questions for you related to that. And just maybe like, are there fears that, here's how we've asked other people, are there fears that keep you up at night, which sometimes is a little bit dramatic. I know there are fears that don't really keep me up at night, but they do cross my sure. mind and they do sure. are meaningful. So maybe you hear it in a different way, but are there fears that impact yeah. you deeply? Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's, I feel like you could go very deep. <laughs> yeah. We only have about uh, 15 more minutes. So the podcast place closes up. But, perfect. Yeah. Um, but so kind of little known fact, um, I, uh, when I was 26, uh, was clinically diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm, okay. So OCD. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, OCD has become like a colloquially used mm-hmm. phrase of like, you know, you, you like to have a clean house. You yeah. know, I'm OCD about cleaning my house or whatever, which, you know, totally cool. Like, you know, keep saying it, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I actually have OCD, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and it and it has you know impacted me um, so much. But thankfully, you know, when I was uh, in that time frame, got you know professional help, uh, in, you know, from like mental health professionals, and uh, they gave me just really, really, really great tools mm-hmm. to use uh, in that. And the reason why I bring it up, you know, a- around the idea of fear is that um that that's basically all ocd is mm. is is almost like a just a constant fear oh, wow. um so you know is is fear a part of my life absolutely like every yeah. minute <laughs> yeah. um wow. it, it absolutely is you know some some people call it the doubting disease mm. uh which you could all you know you could say the fearing disease um constantly fearing uh you know certain things and it shows up in different ways mm-hmm. for everybody um but yeah, that's that's a that's a big thing for me is is fear. Um, but I'm I actually think about my OCD as 
kind of like my superpower mm. um, and not just to like make myself like, you know, feel better. Okay. Um, but I think it has changed the way that I that my brain operates mm. because I know that my brain is constantly fighting against me. Mm. And so I I like always on guard yeah. um, and and am always questioning you know what what do i feel versus what choice am i going to make mm -hmm. about how i respond uh what happens next yeah. all that stuff um so it's really it's really been so helpful to me uh to actually have had this disease mm -hmm. because uh yeah it has made me so much more intentional about fighting back against fear mm. uh, and giving me the tools to fight back where I think, um, you know, people that haven't had it maybe, you know, get fear thrown at them rarely. Yeah. And it's in those times where, you know, you may not be prepared, um, but I feel, you know, I feel pretty prepared yeah. to do that. Yeah. You've kind of answered the next question too, because yeah. I was interested in people that we surveyed of like, how do you respond to fear when it comes up? Yeah. And you've kind of answered, and we gave people a couple options, recognize and run from it, fight mm -hmm. or challenge it, share mm -hmm. with some others, pretend it's not there, which is usually where I tend to go. Yeah, like, oh, sure. Well, all, we're all good. We're all good, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you said you kind of fight, you fight against it. Yeah. What are some ways you, you do that, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it's really about time. Uh, and, and one of those tools, you know, that um, some folks helped me kind of create um, or, or what they call stop words. Mm. Uh, so kind of in the in the world of OCD, that's it's essentially like the cyclical loop of, you know, whatever it is. And um, and so a stop word is just a phrase um, that gets you out of the loop, mm. you know, yeah. and, and, and I think we all get in that sense where, you know, let's say uh, if I, if I have a fear kind of like on the business side right now, it's like, who should I hire? Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, you can, you can go through that loop all day long. Yeah. Who should I hire? Who should I hire? Thinking about different parts of that, you know, just overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. Um, but if you recognize yourself doing that and you have some sort of stop word or stop experience, you know, if it's, uh, you know, like literally just like stop if you're like walking, like literally stop or mm. like, you know, anything, just like change your physical stance. Yeah, physical movement affects yeah. the internal. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Physical stance change. Uh, either say something to yourself, breathe in mm -hmm. deeply, you know, three times or whatever. Yeah. It like, literally can be anything. Uh, it's like, uh, we were just watching Inception and it's like the totem thing, yeah, you yeah. know, it's like, uh, as long as, as long as you know what it means, yeah. then that's what's important. And, uh, you know, if you do that, then it just, it just creates a break in that cyclical chain. Mm. And then that gives you just enough space that you can choose what the next action is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Well, I think that's so applicable to anybody and yeah it's so helpful because i do think we tend to devalue the power of the physical or and we sometimes just become you know victims of our own minds in yeah. a lot of ways and we just assume that it has total control and there are sometimes just through movement through breathing through those yeah. exercises we're able to as you said stop it and halt it and yeah. retake control or at least yeah. get a moment yeah. to break from exactly that. yeah it's really exactly. interesting um so last question um you know, I think that there's always like people think about words of wisdom that you can get from people from years of experience. Yeah, you've been doing sure. this for, you know, your grandfather. He'd have some great words of experience from his words of wisdom from his experience. And but I also think there's a lot of value in words of wisdom that come from fresh experiences. So your grandfather would have great, great stories, but it's been from a from a, a bygone era, you know, yeah. and you've yeah. got experiences that apply today that are really yeah. relevant and, and provide in my mind just as much value. So maybe as you think about the next person ready to start his own business? What are some, even though it's early on, what are some like words of wisdom yeah. you'd pass along to that person? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the the two keys to my success so far um, are both relationships. The The first is just having, uh, you know, an unbelievable life partner, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that is my wife. Um, 
that's on board. You know, we we made the decision in January of 18 that we are going to make this change in roughly January of 19. Mm. Um, I would not have made that decision if she would not have made that decision with me. Mm. You know, we we do everything lockstep. Um, when we notice that we're off, you know, we we talk about it and yeah. and and get back together on you know lockstep. Um, so her support just has been unbelievable uh, through the whole process, and I, I literally could not have done it without her. Still can't do it without her. Um, even more so, it feels yeah. like day by day. <laughs> uh, but then the other one, uh, relationship wise, is um, just just the community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've I've had way more opportunities in my Salesforce, uh, you know, instance than I deserve to have at at this stage. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, ninety percent of those have come from uh, referrals. Uh, people sharing stuff uh, on LinkedIn about me that, you know, I didn't ask them to share. Yeah. They just did, you know, yeah. um, stuff like that where, you know, the the indie community, the tech community, um, there's an organization called the Or Fellowship. Like yeah. every community I've been a part of in the indie area has really just stepped up in ways that I never, ever w- really even could have asked for. Mm-hmm. Um but they have, and so you know, it's it's interesting. Like the the idea of like an overnight success. It's like I kind of feel like I've had an overnight success, but it took ten years of networking yeah. to get there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, and you've had a vision for a while, so it doesn't yeah. just happen, and things just people start knocking at your door. Yeah, gotta, exactly. Exactly. It all comes together. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's been fun to watch, even from a distance, and it's like I was trying to do the math of how long you've been in business because you've yeah. been so busy and had good yeah. su- success. I didn't think it would happen since just February of this year. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad we get, were able to partner and hopefully we'll get a chance yeah, to do absolutely. that again. So, absolutely. Me too. Um, cool. I appreciate your time. And, uh, of course. you know, it's late at night. So thanks for, uh, after a long day of research and stuff, making some time for us. So. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's been fun. You've been listening to Metaphorically Speaking. If you've enjoyed this episode, please rate us on iTunes and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. For more information and to check out our full library of entrepreneurial interviews, visit keyholemarketing.us. Also, feel free to send us an email anytime at hi at keyholemarketing.us. Thank you for listening.